no return for Turner and South Carolina. So here's a homegrown kid, Jake Bentley, whose dad was a high school quarterback before joining the staffs at first Auburn and then South Carolina. He was a ball boy for his dad's team. Multiple state championships there. He grew up around the game of football, and he has smarts that belie his age. Yep, and how do you get him settled in as a young freshman quarterback? Look for him to throw a screen here, either to Brian Edwards or Debo Samuel, to get this game started offensively with Jake Bentley. Rico Dowdle is his tailback. Bentley took the sign from the sideline. The play clock at five now. Missouri shows pressure. They're going to run it on first down with Rico Dowdle, who's had a great couple of weeks. No gain on first down. We see South Carolina's starters. Yeah, Debo Samuel is a guy that has just come to life in this offense the last couple of weeks. He is a matchup problem for most defenses. Not a blazer, but he just finds ways to get himself open. Last three games, 20 catches for Debo Samuel. After only four in the first five. You know, throw it on second and ten. Out to Dowdle. Another touch for the freshman from Asheville, North Carolina. Wrestled down by Eric Beisel and company. Gain of four for this Missouri defense, which has been much maligned all season. Last year is one of the top defenses in college football. Yeah, they've got a good young safety in Cam Hilton, who had his arguably his best game against Kentucky last week. Ten tackles, a tackle for a loss, and two pass breakups. Had a couple of big-time hits in that game as well against the Kentucky Wildcats. South Carolina's offense took a... Big boost last couple weeks. They get it to Hayden Hurst to tie it in, and he can only make it to the 30, a gain of one. So Missouri's defense stands up and will force the punt. And that's where this game, I think, will lie. I think Missouri will be able to move the football offensively. Can they get enough from this defensive unit? Now with Barry Odom calling the signals defensively, can they get enough, slow down a hot quarterback and Jake Bentley find themselves in this game deep into the fourth quarter. Sean Kelly, eighth in the nation with 51 punts. Not a good sign. He mishandled the snap, but gets it away to Jonathan Johnson. And Johnson returns a favor by muffing that. A little sloppy special teams play early. 44-yard punt, only four on the return for the freshman from Memphis. And here's the second-year starting quarterback, Drew Locke, making his 18th start, pardon me, his 17th start today. Sophomore from Lee's Summit, Missouri, last year against South Carolina. And the first ever SEC game that featured yeah. two freshman starting quarterbacks. He was opposite Lorenzo Nunez for South Carolina. Lock in Missouri experienced their high point of the season last year by knocking off the Gamecocks and, Gamecocks and Como. Yeah, 53% on the year. Certainly got to get that up, but he's taking care of the football. Only six interceptions to 18 touchdown passes. Demetrius Mason on the fake jet sweep. They go to the tight end. Sean Culkin on first down, and he takes it past midfield, a gain of 20. A big target right in the middle of the field. The play action holds, and once they get that first first down, that's when Missouri likes to punch the gas. They'll try to get a playoff within seven seconds of the ball being spotted. Lock, quick hitter to the right side, trying to find a screen to Eric Lauren. The ball came loose, South Carolina. Wanting to return it, but they say incomplete. Chris Lamonds, who's starting at safety, in on the play for South Carolina. Reminder, the Gamecocks without D.J. Smith, their starting free safety ejected for targeting in the Tennessee game. He'll be out here for the second half. And you see Jonathan Johnson trying to throw the block out wide, and the other receiver underneath just got to catch it first. Locke had to pull it back twice. He ends up picking up five. There's Johnson, he's a very quick receiver inside. Coaches love to use him in their screen game and just they get him the ball in space and let him operate. Third down five. Play action again. Locke has all day, and he fires too strong. A bullet through the hands of Sean Culkin. There's still some of the inexperience that shows with Drew Locke. He's got Culkin wide open. Why would you need to throw it 100 miles an hour? Sometimes the off-speed pitch is just as effective. Right here, he comes into the second window. Just throw him a nice catchable ball. Put it between the eight and the zero, and the drive continues. They want, you know, young guys always want to show how strong, how fast they can throw a football. It's not necessary. 
Corey Fatoni's punt will go unfielded by South Carolina. They've had issues in their punt return team all season. 25-yard punt for Fatoni. Beautiful afternoon for football in Columbia, South Carolina. No score early. Tempo when they're on defense because they will go fast. Missouri bringing pressure again. Bentley getting out of the pocket and taking it straight forward before he took a hit from Cale Garrett. Home crowd wanted a flag. There is one. There should be one. When you give yourself up, you've got to pull up as a defender. You can't even tap the quarterback once he gives himself up. And by that, I mean going feet first. Here's Ken Williamson. Oh, targeting added to that. We're targeting. So that is big for a Missouri team, which is already without Michael Shearer. They're one of their leaders in starting linebackers who was lost a couple of weeks ago to a torn ACL. And Barry Odom, former linebacker himself, cannot stand this because he knows what it means. There's, you know, the question is crown of the helmet there. And crown of the helmet starts at the top of the face mask. Yeah, I think the thing that's going to save... Garrett here in this situation is that he didn't really follow through with it. He was just kind of just kind of a love tap. I, I think this one will be reversed and he'll be able to stay in the game. Now had he launched or had he not shown that he was trying to pull up or gone down with Bentley, then I think it would have stood and he'd be ejected from this game. But I think partner he, I, I I see it differently. I mean, yeah. I think the crown of the helmet and the rule is written in such a way That's that if, if you're going to come with the crown of the helmet on a defenseless player, quarterback is not defenseless when he's running, but when he gives himself up, he is defenseless. He is going into a feet first slide. He is giving himself up. And if he doesn't, if Cale Garrett doesn't lower his head and go with the crown of the helmet, I think he's still in the game. But it still probably would have been a 15-yard well, flag penalty. wouldn't have been thrown, but I, I get what you're saying, but I, I just think that as he's He's coming up or not really following through. That may save him in this in this instance. Here's the rule. Defenseless opponent with forcible contact. I, I just don't think it was forcible. That's the magic word as far as this play is concerned. Well, they, they went ahead and ejected him. Yep. He's disqualified where, himself from the game. So Garrett out on the second series for this Missouri defense. That's where the rule is black and white, and I think there should be some gray area. And I, I just don't feel like there was malicious intent by Cale Garrett in that situation to be ejected from this football game. Freshman from Kearney, Missouri. The coaches rave about his football IQ, but Andre, right or wrong, that was not a smart play. You can't no, put I yourself agree with that. in that it's, position to be judged. Yeah, but it's something that I think he and certainly the Missouri Tigers going forward the rest of the afternoon will learn from. But uh, you talk about adding insult to injury at a thin spot already. So Eric Beisel will take over at linebacker for Missouri. They wanted to rotate both Garrett and Beisel in that spot. Beisel had a great game against Kentucky as Missouri yeah. showed more pressure from its linebackers and front line last week than they had all season when Barry Odom took over the defense. Yeah, Beisel had five tackles against Kentucky and three of those being for a loss. So that is an ex exceptional game for a player that a couple of weeks ago was getting limited reps. Rico Dowdle in the backfield for South Carolina. Second possession for the Gamecocks and freshman quarterback Jake Bentley. Dowdle gets turned around, still manages to pick up three yards and a big hit out of the secondary from T.J. Warren from Missouri, who came in as a cornerback, then was a safety, now a linebacker due to the attrition at that level. Yeah, this was a guy that wasn't even on the radar a couple of weeks ago and has stepped in and has, has moved from corner to linebacker a nice job. Bentley gives it up to Dowdle. Missouri much better against the run today than they were last week. Eric Beisel in there for a loss of one. And Coach Will Muschamp will go against Florida next week. But first, trying to get above 500 in conference play against Missouri today. 
And, boy, he was a lot looser when we met with him yesterday <laughs> than when we were in there a couple weeks ago. Yeah, no doubt about it. I went down the field and visited with him before the game. He's just always in joy, no matter win, lose, or draw, visiting with Mush Coach Muschamp the following week. And he, uh, he delivered again yesterday. Pressure again on third and eight. Mizzou can't get to Bentley, and he gets it away for a South Carolina first down to Debo Samuel. Boy, it's as if there's no pass rush around this young man, Jake Bentley stood in there everything flying around you look at all the pass rushers start to close in pulls his arm down to the shoulder where you can't get a, a hand on the football and then delivers a strike to Samuel two tight ends on the field now for South Carolina one of them Hayden Hurst they trying to go that way and it's incomplete trying to find the former baseball standout let's go back and take a look at the pocket presence of Jake Bentley this is a guy a young man that should be playing his senior year in high school you see him pull the ball away from Marcel Frazier so he can't swat it down just nice calm composed and accurate is that simply intuitive that's just studying the game and being around it a long time and just some God-given gifts to play the position Looking for a screen here, and Brian Edwards, a talented freshman from up in Conway, South Carolina, able to pick up five. Anthony Sherrill's the stop for Missouri. Cole, what are you seeing down there? I see this Missouri defensive front. They're running some stunts and games, but just giving some of them away. You saw the defensive end on the right side of the offensive line there, about a yard off the football, squeezed tight to the defensive tackle. An obvious twist that's coming early. This South Carolina offensive line saw everything under the sun from Tennessee defensive coordinator Bob Shoup last week. They're getting some games here early, Tom. Tennessee brought pressure just about every play yeah. in South Carolina last week. Bentley goes to the three receiver side and a falling grab made by Debo Samuel, his second catch. That goes for three. And to your point, all of a sudden, Missouri's trying to bring a little bit as well. Beisel coming in late from that linebacker spot, unable to get there. But when you have a young man like this, should be in high school. We keep hitting on that because it is a, a, a unique situation. But they're going to try to heat him up, make him uncomfortable, but he is a gym rat. He is prepared for every look that he faces in, during a game. Well, Muschamp decides to punt it away on fourth and two in plus territory. And so Sean Kelly will try to pin Missouri deep. Fair catch asked for and taken inside the 10 at the eight yard line by Jonathan Johnson. 36 yard punt from Sean Kelly. Slow start to this one. Here comes a blitz. Bring LeMond's on it from the far side and Demetrius Mason makes him pay. Lost the football, South Carolina's got it. Well, the one, one of the things that Missouri couldn't have happen offensively was to turn the ball over. They improved the last week in that area. And right here, Lamont is actually Steven Montac who comes in, gets a hand on the football, rakes it out of there. Clearly out. And then Lamont comes in. Chris Lamont with a fumble recovery. And remember, Andre, how about the hustle by Lamont? He was the one coming on that corner blitz to get it's, back into the play. You got to have a motor wherever you play. You hear about that so much from defensive linemen, but whatever position you play, you got to play with passion. So much champ deciding to punt, it pays off. Rico Dowdle around the right side, and he picks up nine on first down before Cam Hilton brings him down. And this is what happens. It starts to happen to a defense that's thin already. Then defensively, you turn the ball over. They're right back on the field. They start to wear down even faster. Dowdle changes direction. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe Brandon Lee with the stop. One of the things I'm seeing with this Missouri defense, and I don't know that we saw it last right. week, the defensive line especially going to the wristbands to see the play. Barry Odom's tried to simplify a lot of things, including the signaling, so they can get the play direct. But Looks like they're almost a little bit late. Anything just to, to get it in faster and allow them to play freely. The less you have to think, the more freely you can play as a player, no matter what position. They're down one. First down for Dowdle. 
just a freshman, and he has been magnificent. A career high 127 yards against Tennessee and a touchdown. And you talk to Kurt Roper, the way he describes Dowdle is he runs through contact. Very talented player who missed some time earlier in the year with a sports hernia. He is 100% now, and the last couple of weeks, been magnificent. 27 carries last week, 127 yards, and throw in a touchdown run. Touchdowns in consecutive games for the freshman. Samuel in motion. They'll give it to him on the jet sweep. He's got the corner, and he's got the score. Touchdown, South Carolina, after the turnover. That's the guy we decided to highlight in the lineups, and there is a reason for our madness, a method to the madness. Just enough speed. They say he's not a burner, but I'll tell you what, he has football speed, and nobody, and I mean nobody on Missouri's defense was going to catch him on that play. Elliot Fry attempting to tie the <coughs> South Carolina school record for career points. He's only missed one extra point in his entire career. That was as a freshman, and he drills this one through the uprights. Chance for a return for Alex Ross for Missouri. And he is cut down at the 13-yard line. Crazy day throughout all of college football, especially in the SEC. Here's Dari to tell us about it. Tom, you are not kidding. It is an SEC right now brought to you by State Farm. Arkansas had a pick six, then another score of their own to go up 14-zip on Florida. Then Austin Allen picked by Duke Dawson. He takes it to the house. It is 14-7. They are just underway in the second. Hey, tell Andre Thunder up. <laughs> Every time. How yeah. about that, though, Andre? Both teams with a pick six in the first quarter. Yeah. Just a snapshot of how wild today is throughout the SEC. Yeah, it really has been that way. And then you go back, and all of a sudden, the, the college football rankings come out. A&M number four. They go down in Starkville. First Crazy. run of the day for Missouri. Marvin Zanders in at quarterback for the Tigers on this, their third possession. It's a gain of six. Remember, they like to go to him as a change of pace. They just don't want to get out of the passing rhythm that Locke brings them. Yeah, this is a change up for them. You know he's coming in, he wants, they want to run when he comes in the game. Lock in, he's pressured from the back side, and he can't get away from a blitzing Bryson Allen Williams. One of their playmakers on the defensive side of the ball is a versatile player who can play inside linebacker and outside. Watch him here come, and he's going to get home. Nobody takes him. The back comes out or is releasing in the pattern as opposed to staying in for protection, and you're not going to get away from Bryson Allen Williams. Well, this allows you to defensively to play downhill. Damon Moore with his first catch of the game. Able to pick up five, but Missouri punted away. DJ Wanham chased Moore out of bounds. Not that it's his fault, but it's his second consecutive week that Marvin Zanders has entered the game for Missouri, and the offense has gone backwards. Corey Fatoni to punt it away. Chris Lamont should give South Carolina great field position, but we've got a flag. Oh, what it does, Tom, a sack like that puts you in bad field position. You're limited offensively to what you can do to attack. South Carolina had 12. Coming out of the huddle, so a legal formation there. So then if you're South Carolina, the table switch. Now all of a sudden you become the attacker. You're not, you know, really playing. It's bad field position already, but you can really come after the quarterback once you get the sack that Bryson Allen Williams had. Now Will Muschamp is a little bit easier as a play caller. Both he and, uh, and Travaris Robinson, the defensive coordinator, to Call defensive looks when you got a team backed up that far. Wow, for Tony launches that one all the way down. We'll see where they mark it. They'll walk it up all the way to the 33 yard line. It's a 49 yard punt for the sophomore from Franklin, Tennessee. You see, this is pretty good field position. 
It's a South Carolina team, Andre, that's been riding yeah. a roller coaster this season. A Thursday night to start the year. Elliott Fry with a game winner on the road at Vandy. That win looks a lot more impressive this time of year than it did then. And then they lose four out of their next five. They have a game moved back by Hurricane Matthew. And now with Jake Bentley after an off week as a starter, they've won two in a row. They're knocking on bowl eligibility's door. Yeah, talking to Coach Muschamp before the game, let's see if they take this shot. He wanted to go deep early in this game. Not yet. So they turn to the ground game. And a gain of four for A.J. Turner. Tom, I'll be anxious to see if Jake Bentley begins to keep some of these zone read option plays. I know Kurt Roper's probably asking him to protect himself, play it safe early, just go to the ground game. But these Missouri defensive ends and outside defenders are crunching down quickly. They have been relatively predictable in those plays as he gives it up again, and A.J. Turner has nowhere to go, thrown for a loss of six. I would stay away from him, and here's the reason why. I don't want to bring injury into it. We've got something special. And when I tell you I turn the film on, when I start to watch Jake Bentley, I think he's special. I'm not going to put him in harm's way with a lead. This is the third consecutive week that he's played with a lead, not having to play from behind. I'm not going to subject him to injury by him running the football. They've run the ball seven consecutive plays. After looking at what Kentucky did against Missouri last week, you understand why. Bentley pressured, and he gets drilled right in the grill by Charles Harris. Loss of 11. Well, and this is one of the things that Kurt Roper told us concerned him. Charles Harris, their best pass rusher for Missouri, excellent off the edge, and just watch him work. Sets him up outside, comes back underneath, and then nobody's going to pick me up. Well, quarterback still has the ball in his hands. A little bit too long trying to get through things. And then Charles Harris arrives at the doorstep of Jake Bentley. Oh, well, big stand for Missouri's defense. Jonathan Johnson. Oh, nice move. Gets to the outside and is able to take it past to the 40. 42 yard punt, 13 on the return. Jerry Pinklestaff as the operations guy and then the head coach at Rockbridge High School just five miles south of Mizzou's campus in Columbia position coach defensive coordinator now an opportunity he, as a head coach he promised me on the field before the game that his team was going to play well today turned it over early but they are very much in this ball game here's Demarie Crockett no it's play action Deep ball down the sideline, and it was off the hands of Jamon Moore. He was that close to making a spectacular play over Jamarcus King. Yeah, he got the tempo started with a catch for a first down to get the drive going, and here almost coming up with a spectacular catch over uh, was Jamarcus King, who had an outstanding game last week with five tackles and two picks. Tigers went unbalanced left, and then they throw right to Demetrius Mason. Now they like this true freshman. Two touchdown catches last week on four, four receptions, 100 yards. He's got some speed and can flat out burn. They'll flip Polkin. Tigers go trips left along with Rashad Floyd. Locke escapes the pocket and he gets brought down well short of the first down. Taylor Stallworth with the tackle. Looked like the pocket was holding pretty well, but that clock in his head told him to move. I think he could have stayed there a little bit longer. It was holding up so well. Barry Odom's going to go for it here on fourth down, but there's still plenty of time. No pass rusher had come free to where he had or felt like he even needed to pull it down. He just, that clock just went off. Fourth down six. Right here at the bottom of the screen. Lock goes left, batted down. Jamarcus King with two picks last week against Tennessee. That dude's a playmaker. That's tell you, it's a great point. Is that when you're in a critical situation, you don't go at the best cover man or a guy that had two picks a week ago. You find the weakness, the weakest cover guy in their secondary. If they're going to man it up, that's where you're going with the football.
find the matchup, the favorable matchup, to move the chain. And it should be simple in that regard, Andre, because Jamarcus King will always be on the left side of South Carolina's defense. And that's, as locks that's exactly why I went right with the slot with the telestrator to show you where Drew Locke should go with the football. It's Even based on coverage, it told me to the right. It's not like King is flipping sides before every snap. So, turnover on downs, back to South Carolina. Debo Samuel, that's my bike, Park! And he's got a first down, Andre, but a flag on the play. <laughs> oh, a little Friday action <laughs> on a Saturday <laughs> afternoon. Love it. The gain of 28 if it stands, but they're it's, walking back. It'll be a first down, but from the spot of the foul, it'll be a hole, so... Not as good field, uh, field position. They get Brian Edwards, a <laughs> freshman flag. I have to chuckle myself. <laughs> Every time I say Debo's name, I get a little chuckle because I think of the movie Friday. How are you going to get you, you on think, day you, off? You think his teammates don't give him a hard time, but you know what? When you can play like this, you shut them all up. Right there. Well, what a night. He is really come to life the last couple of couple of weeks he and Edwards they were both injured early Edwards flag for holding on John Gibson so fresh set of downs for South Carolina but the yardage given back and now they'll turn it to Rico Dowdle again and he gets wrestled down by Cam Hilton and company well, Dowdle kind of a compact bill at 511 2 2 11 but he can change direction so quickly. I think that's what makes him special. He's from Asheville, North Carolina. There's another back out of North Carolina that was pretty special as well that played in the SEC. No. Oh, yeah, Todd Gurley. They're You're pretty... comparing the two? No, no, I'm not comparing. Okay. I'm saying they're both from the state of North <laughs> Carolina. That's about the only comparison I'm giving. Second and two now. Here's Dowdle again. He has looked Gurley-esque, though, over the last <laughs> couple of games. And they've turned to him 43 carries over the yeah. last two games. And here's the interesting thing we got from Will Muschamp yesterday. They went, they came out of the Kentucky game, and they sat down in staff meetings, and they said, who are we? Let's identify yeah. who we are. Let's find something, and let's stick to it. And that, they decided, was an inside running team. Yeah, inside zone is what they wanted to become, and that's what they started to concentrate on. It, it really lightened the load for the offensive line as well, and they started to specialize there. Bentley gives it up on first down, a gain of three. Let's go back to the studio and check in with Dari. All right, guys, how about an SEC right now? Brought to you by State Farm. We update Tennessee and Tennessee Tech, a 14-0 lead. Hand off to John Kelly. Remember, Jalen Hurd gone, no Alvin Kamara. It is Kelly now. And he busts a big one, 21 nothing Vols on the verge of snapping the three-game skid, guys. All right, Dari, thanks. What do you think Jalen Hurd's thinking, sitting at home watching his former guys battle? <laughs> I just thought, I, I, I've, uh, I've said it. I said it during a game that we had there a few weeks ago. I thought they used him wrong. I think he is a eye pistol type back that needs to come downhill. He's too big to run laterally, in my opinion, and I just don't think they were getting the best out of him. It, but you don't quit on your teammates. And that I don't I don't agree with whatsoever. You finish the season, then you make you make whatever decision is best for you, but you at least finish the season. Here's the thing. You can fill, fool the fans and you can fool the media. Yep. You can maybe even fool your coaching staff. You can't fool the can't, guys in that locker room. Not in the locker room. There's no way. One thing that's come out of that for Tennessee, though, we're hearing stories of great team leadership to help affect change in that locker room. Second and 12 now. And Dowdle heard the footsteps coming. It'll be incomplete. John Gibson there to blow him up. Here's what we heard from Butch Jones this week after Hurd decided he was going to transfer. I mean, those are just words, but the bottom line is his teammates sense that he wasn't all in, and there's the door. Yeah, that's really what it, what it boils down to in a very, about as positive a way as you could really describe it by Butch Jones. But uh, if you don't want to be here, you know, go ahead and, uh, and excuse yourself. It's a big win for South Carolina last week, regardless against Tennessee. Now they have momentum. Two of, 12, two of five, pardon me, on third downs today. This is a third and 12 to close the first quarter. Bentley looking for a screen, and nothing doing that time. Brandon Lee takes down Rico Derry Young, and I sense that they were very relaxed this week. Well, I don't think Will Muschamp is in the business of keeping his team relaxed. Fair catch lost, and then Missouri able to recover it. Jonathan Johnson making some hearts to skip a beat or two. 
after that 41-yard punt. Here's what's remaining for South Carolina to get to a bowl. Remember, we were here two weeks ago, Andre, and he said, yeah. we still need six, and we've got it in our sights. We now have healthy young wide receivers that allow us to stretch the field, and that was before he even admitted that Bentley was going to get his first Makes start. Makes this one extremely important against Missouri because, yeah, at Florida, but you have Western Carolina that if you take care of business today, I got to believe that gets them, gets them to six. And they are on to a bowl game. And with a young player like Jake Bentley, another 15 practices could play a major part in his development. South Carolina has dominated time of possessions. They've run 10 more plays in Missouri already today. Tamaria Crockett, great young looking freshman at a little rock is able to take it for nine yeah here's another kid that when you turn the film on you get excited about him and if you're a missouri fan you feel pretty good about the running game with crockett and they go right back to him he's the only freshman in school history with three 100 yard rushing games last coming against middle tennessee city went for 156 and four touchdowns that was a freshman record in rushing yards and touchdowns in a single game Crockett again for the third consecutive play. Picks up three. He was a little dinged up a couple of weeks ago. Finally got healthy against Kentucky, but they were able to kind of keep him contained. 13 carries, just 55 yards last week for the true freshman. On second and seven, Locke is able to dump it off to his tight end, Kendall Blanton, just shy of a first down. That will leave third and one, Cole. One of the issues that Traveris Robinson, defensive coordinator, talked to us about, Tom, was getting in line. Will Muschamp came down and told T-Rob yesterday while I was sitting with him, I don't care what defense you run, I don't care what the call is, make sure our guys are lined up. Gamecocks having some issues with it on this drive. They show pressure on third and one. Locke hesitates, and a quarterback keeper, and he's right up the seam for a first down, and Locke taken down for a gain of 12. They've been really happy with Drew Locke's decision-making in the run game. Yeah, I mean, you, you look at it. He's a former basketball player, very good basketball player, solid athlete, and that's just a part of his game you really don't give him credit for. Fires complete on a slant. Demetrius Mason on the move, and Missouri's got a first down deep in South Carolina territory, a gain of 28. Yeah, the true freshman put it on the ground early, trying to make up for it. Gets inside position on a slant route and almost houses it. They're going unbalanced again, this time to the right side. In the past, they've gone away from the unbalanced line, and they've thrown left in this scenario. You see Culkin, number 80, is lined up normally where a tackle would be. Right here, you get the man-to-man -man you want with the best receiver on their roster. Now they'll run it out of this formation, and there's a huge hole for Crockett. DeMaurie Crockett will muscle his way in from 29 yards out. He ran right over Chris Moody. Moody, usually a linebacker, is playing some safety because the injury's on the back end, but when you go man-to-man, -man, and you forget you, you you you're able to split the second level and all of a sudden you're one on one with a safety that advantage is going to be to the true freshman Crockett each and every time. Oh, what a nice run blocked well up front Samson Bailey the center throws an excellent block for Demarie Crockett. A seven play, 90 yard scoring drive for Drew Locke in Missouri. Demarie Crockett. And a man missed at the line of scrimmage, took it the rest of the way. It's now the most productive rushing scene. Well, I'll tell you what, Adams threw one heck of a block. Bailey inside for the other. And then it was off to the races, which is all you try to design plays for, to get to one-on-one -on -one situations. A lot of people think that term means receiver versus defensive back. No, it's sometimes it's the running back on either a linebacker or a third-level player like a safety. You get to the safety, you just it's just about a house call every time. Barry Odom handling the defensive calls now, took those responsibilities away from his former teammate, Demonte Cross, who was a co-DC at TCU under Gary Patterson last year. It's been the story of this season for Missouri. Barry Odom wanted to install what he ran at Memphis when he was the defensive coordinator there. It was such a big change, and this defense was so lost that they reverted to a much simpler system as to what they ran last year. 
Here's the rub as Dowdle tries to find some space. Augusta is able to wrap him up and throw him for a loss. Andre, Missouri is 127th in the nation. They allow 102 yards per game after contact. I don't care what scheme you're running. Yeah. If you can't you make tackle. tackles, you're done. You, you got to make tackles. You can be there. You can, you can get yourself in position, but you have to finish the job. And that's where they've been coming up a little bit short. Well, a lot short mm -hmm. defensively. Getting him, getting in position to make plays and not make it. And I tell you what, big Josh, he, he got there and he finished the last play. Josh Augusta with a tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Here's Hayden Hurst who takes a screen up the sideline for a first down. Eric Beisel finally brings down the former Pittsburgh Pirate farmhand. Yeah, who's made himself into an NFL prospect by moving from wide receiver at 6'5", now 250 pounds, down to tight end, improving every week as a blocker likes the inline stuff but uh, still had needs a little bit of improvement in space working against smaller defensive players two tight ends in the game now for South Carolina as they turn to AJ Turner he's found it tough sledding Eric Beisel brings him down after three and just to kind of put a bow on that with Barry Odom going back and, and, and basically going to the the system that was in place it's a whole lot easier for him to learn the system that was in place than 85 other players mm -hmm. to learn a new system. You know, you use or utilize what they're used to and then play to their strengths. So it's going to take some, some getting used to on his part. Well, he was a defensive coordinator last year at Missouri after being away down in Memphis with Justin Fuente for three seasons. Bentley on the run, back foot, and it is caught nice. at the 30-yard line by Brian Edwards. Gain of 28. Talking to Will Muschamp, he said, we've got two that play on the outside that I'd put against anybody, or against anybody in the country. Brian Edwards and Debo Samuel, he's already made some plays. You start looking for Samuel, and the other guy on the other side can hurt you. So now South Carolina turning up the tempo, taking a page from Missouri's book. Turner picks up a pair. Bentley certainly capable, because between the ears, he is as good as there is I've seen all season long. A guy that can get through progressions. It's not one side of the field or just one read and pull it down. It's through progressions, and you can see it. You will see it throughout this ball game. He is efficient. 9 of 11 today. 15 of 20 last week against Tennessee. Three-man rush. Missouri drops eight. Bentley can't find a hole. And that's a play that they have fallen in love with, just the idea that he yeah, can not throw it away. Don't force it. He went through, he got to about the third option in that play, and it wasn't there. Don't force it, get rid of it. We'll watch him here. Watch his helmet. It's about the center of the field, then it's kind of towards the right, then it's to the sideline. Nobody's open. Let it go out of bounds. That's excellent work. Simple throwaway, but a smart play. Third down, eight. Missouri rushes only three again. Bentley completes it to Edwards, and he makes it to the 20. If he did, that'd be a first down. Let's see the spot. I think he's going to have it. Maybe just short, but boy, did he stretch it out there. Wow, that's that, not a good spot. Roll, yeah, I agree with the fans here who are certainly booing. Watch the extend. The ball comes down at the 20. I think the, the replay officials may have to take a look at this one. Fourth and one, they're going to go for it here. Bentley will empty. Guess what? Wildcat and a first down. Missouri got torched by Kentucky's Wildcat Wildcat last week. 23 times Kentucky ran the Wildcat. Direct snap to the back and came downhill. They pretty much owned Missouri offensively in the second half, or especially the fourth quarter with that formation alone. 23 snaps of it. You had to figure that Kurt Roper was going to get to it at some point in this game. So spot two plays ago irrelevant now back to Rico Dowdle. Kentucky's running backs were so good against Missouri last week. The Tigers stayed in the same yeah. call every time against the Wildcat. Couldn't stop it. It was the most productive two-back day for a Kentucky team since Bear Bryant was the coach there. I'll tell you what, they did some work. True freshman along with Boom Williams. Amazing. Second down nine.
Bentley looks left. Fade route. End zone. Incomplete. Trying to get it to Casey Crosby. Couldn't bring it down in bounds. Tell you what, he bobbled it, which is why I think they're gonna they ruled it an incompletion. The foot, I think, comes down in bounds, but it bounces off his chest. He loses it right there. You'll see that the foot's in bounds, but it bounced away. Let's see if he has possession. He reels it back in. Foot still in bounds. Uh, let's review this one because that's a touchdown. And what a throw. What a throw by Jake Bentley. Tom, watching film, I get excited about this kid. Live action, I get excited about the kid. I told him he was going to be special when I went down on the field. Just keep doing what you do. That one looks like it's in bounds. It was ruled incomplete on the field, so they'll get on the headset. And Andre, here's my only counter to that. Ken Williamson, by the way, our referee, Mike McGinnis, our replay official, they get help from Birmingham with the replay center back mm -hmm. in the SEC offices. It was ruled incomplete on the field. We haven't, this might be the cleanest look of the left foot, but I can't still tell you whether or not that foot is on the white or not because it's blocked by the Mizzou player's foot. Oh, right there. I, I don't know that you can see any green. Yeah. It, it, because the foot's going to roll over. Right here, watch it as it rolls over. It's in bounds, we knew, and then it rolls over. He secures the catch before he hits the ground. I, I agree that he secured the ball. I just don't I know it's that it's indisputable. Yeah, I, I think this one's going to get, because he loses it, the foot's still down, he regains it. I think that's six. I think it's a pretty good play. Yeah, and they're pretty close even if if they don't overturn the ruling on the field which I think they should I think if it was ruled a touchdown on the field there's no doubt they would have kept it a touchdown yeah. I just don't know that there's enough indisputable video evidence you know what we need pylon cam can you put that request in <laughs> that would have told us you got it two desperate teams Will Muschamp trying to get South Carolina back to a bowl Missouri trying to rip off four in a row to get themselves bowl eligible. Okay, work with me here. Let's just pretend that it's ruled incomplete and they're looking at third and long again. What do you do with Bentley? Take another look at the left foot of Casey Crosby. Is it in or not? Can you I think reliably he, he, said without, say without a doubt that it's in? Well, when I look at it, I see that it's in. I think the foot's in as he, as it plants and starts to come up on the toes, He's still in bounds. At that point, he regains possession of the football. Steve Shaw is back in Birmingham watching this one, no doubt about that, and wondering why they don't have bigger monitors back in the video center. <laughs> because I, I, I just can't, I think we disagree on what we're seeing here. I yeah. can't see it. By the way, elsewhere in SEC play, Arkansas is up a touchdown on Florida as they near the end of the first half. I think that's a touchdown. This is think. this replay is taking a while that that tells me that they are very unsure of what they're seeing. Replays in the SEC this year had been the fastest as they've ever been since replay was introduced in college football. Boy, that's a heck of a play. But the time spent on this is an outlier. I think your biggest hit is that it's green turf coming up and not white and turf. And not white turf. Foots down, it regains the ball. Still in. Mm. Looks like six to me. The ball can move. You know, as he's going to turf, he I can bet still you every, be in every Missouri fan watching After this game review, the ruling on the field stands. is happy right now. <laughs> but they're saying it incomplete. I bet you every South Carolina fan is calling it complete. Depends on what color your golf shirt is, right? If it's no gold, doubt. you're seeing it one way. Yep. Garnet, you're seeing another. So now third and nine, what do you do with Jake Bentley? I think if you can spread out Missouri, you run the draw right here. Maybe you get Hurst with two safeties as they're trying to rotate down. You see the rotation down and over. We're going to have a single safety look here outside. There goes Hurst into the end zone the opposite way. It is batted away, and it is caught! 
What a play by Rico Dowdle. Off of Eric Beisel and into the hands of the freshman. Don't tell me Jake Bentley can't read coverages. Weakness of the defense, what it appeared to be too deep, he was stinking Hayden Hurst. Once it rotated, I said outside. Where'd the ball go? Outside. This job actually ricochets off Eric Beisel's left, the back of his left arm, and nice concentration by Rico Dowdle to reel it in. First career touchdown reception for the freshman. And now a chance to be the all-time leader in points for Elliott Fry. He is. He has set a new career record with his second extra point of the day. He's made 142 of those in a row. In the NFL where he's just about taking the handoff. Ground ball fielded at the 12-yard line. And good field position by Missouri after Crockett brings it out. Well, Jake Bentley thus far today is thrown for a touchdown, 107 yards through the air, efficient 11 of 15. You see any interceptions on there? Nope. No, none. None all season. That's five touchdown passes, no interceptions. The kid, I mentioned it earlier, just a gym rat. Studies, a lot of film. I say film. I said I was going to, today this morning, I said I was going to eliminate that word from my vocabulary. Video is going in. There's Ish Witter with his first. There's carry no of the film. Day. Film sounds so old school to me now. It's video. You're studying the video. You still own CDs? A couple. But yeah. I don't use them. It's okay. Very rarely. Second down for Drew Locke and company. Back to Ish Witter again. You're talking about young quarterbacks being able to take care of the football. Well, Missouri learned on the other end how that can be so dangerous. Consecutive pick sixes that Drew Locke threw in their game in Gainesville against Florida. Ball game over at that point. Yeah, no doubt. And because the morale of the football team goes with the pick six. I mean, you just feel like you have no, no hope at that point. Nice move. Wow, he threw on the brakes, and he got clocked after a feet first slide. Locke gets a flag late. Chris LeMans came in and will at least be penalized 15 yards. Yeah, we got to take a look and see if he goes above the shoulder pads on Personal Drew Locke. Foul, targeting yeah. defense number three. The previous play is under review. He had one against Tennessee where he, well, actually got tossed for fighting in the first half last week. And this one, he is, he's going to be gone, Tom. This one will stand. There's no pull off. Mm. There's going through. There's follow through. There's intent. All of, all of what's written in that rule happened right there. And, He'll sit the rest of this one out. So it'll be the second consecutive game that Chris LeMans will be ejected. Last week against Tennessee in the first quarter for unsportsmanlike after taking a couple of swings at Juwan Jennings. DJ Smith is the safety normally for South Carolina. He can't play in this game for another seven minutes and 48 yeah. seconds on the clock. He'll return in the second half. But for the meantime, South Carolina's got to find some personnel if this ejection holds. And here's why, because they take LeMans and move him down inside over the, you know, there's so many wide receivers in the formation for Missouri that they move him down into the nickel spot. This is from last week where he throws a couple of haymakers right here. Right here, low one, a high one. That would get you eject ejected. Travaris Robinson After said this. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The penalty is 15 yards, an automatic first down. Number three is disqualified from the ball game. Second consecutive game that LeMond's from Lauderhill, Florida, has been ejected. And Travaris Robinson Cole already had a talk with him last yeah. week after he threw two punches and said, what's the point of that? What are you going to get? You're not going to hurt the guy. He's wearing pads. No, I love that by T-Rob saying, did you hurt him? I mean, did you hurt his, maybe you hurt his feelings. But <laughs> T-Rob told me yesterday, too, he said, Cole, I've got 10 DBs on this team, 10. He said, I need upwards of 15 to play. He said, they were talking to Debo Samuel on the sideline last week about, we might have to put you in there and go cover somebody. Yeah. Especially against this Missouri team that runs 79 plays a game and two weeks ago ran more than 100. Locke trying to go to Demetrius Mason. And that's my point, Tom, is that you're going to see at the very least in a formation three receivers, sometimes four. Then they'll empty it out, and you'll have five. So you don't have enough quality defensive backs to cover up. Now for Drew Locke, with LeMond's out of the game, find the matchup that you like. Chaz Elder, normally a cornerback, is in there at safety now as Missouri goes to Ish Witter for the 
fourth time on this drive, and he picks up four yards. Missouri's tempo is the best in the SEC. They want to try to wear defenses down just by the sheer volume of plays because they don't have the size and personnel to do it in a traditional style. See the time of possession for drive ranks first. Seconds for play off the clock. First. They go fast, in other words, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Former Oklahoma quarterback Josh Heupel, the OC. Nothing doing on the run game with Witter again. Bryson Allen Williams is stop. And as well, it'll change the way T. Rob Travaris Robinson calls defense. He's not quite as enough, man, uh, quite a lot of man to man. He'll get out. He'll get away from that. You'll see South Carolina play more zone coverage because of the loss of Chris LeMans. Missouri going for it on fourth down for the second time today. Blanton's the tight end on the right side. Locke looking over the middle at him. Nothing there. Goes left. Finds Jamon Moore. And he spins his way to a Mizzou first down on a gain of 10. Nice job of getting to the first down marker. So when he, when he caught the pass, he was already there, but then he's a, he's a special player. After the catch, able to spin and get a couple of more. Witter finds a hole straight up the middle. Ish Witter takes it in. 25-yard touchdown run, and it looks eerily similar to what Crockett did from 29 yards out. He took the words right out of my mouth. It almost looked like the same play. Split the safeties. We'll see the linebackers miss. Nice block by Kendall Blanton, the tight end. And then it's a foot race. And you don't have to run long. And you have the type of drive Missouri had there. Andre, after Missouri's first touchdown, and after the point after, there was some back and forth between Missouri's offense and the South Carolina student section in the north end zone. That continued right after that. One of the students, or somebody in those stands, threw a water bottle onto the field that nearly hit Drew Locke. How cool is Drew Locke? He picked it up and took a drink out of it. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. You're a Heisman winner. You're never by yourself. I am when I go there. Kickoff will go out of bounds in this last play after the touchdown. A little bit out of bounds by the South Carolina student section after Missouri was able to score. Watch the water bottle come out of the student out section. Out and towards the feet of Drew Locke, number three, the Missouri quarterback. And then watch what he does with it. Now, Andre, listen to me here. First down. If the Carolina student section is anything like the student sections that I've sat in back in the day, you can't be entirely sure that that's just one. Yeah, could be uh, something else. Oh, boy. And then when Paul Adams, the offensive lineman, came up the field after the extra point, Drew Locke said, did you see that? Did you see what I did? <laughs> <laughs> Who I knew? Couldn't, I couldn't do it. Who knew the Battle of Columbia's would have so much animosity? May have poured it over my head, but certainly would not have taken that drink. Here's AJ Turner on the left side. Watch the water bottle come out of the student Kicking section. After Missouri was able to score, watch the water bottle come out of the student Kicking section. And towards the feet of Drew Locke, number three, the Missouri quarterback. And then watch what he does with it. Now, Andre, listen to me here. First down. If the Carolina student section is anything like the student sections that I've sat in back in the day, you can't be entirely sure that that's just one. Yeah, could be uh, something else. Oh, boy. And then when Paul Adams, the offensive lineman, came up the field after the extra point, Drew Locke said, did you see that? Did you see what I did? <laughs> <laughs> Who I knew? Could, I couldn't do it. Who knew the Battle of Columbia's would have so much animosity? I may have poured it over my head, but certainly would not have taken that drink. There's A.J. Turner on the left side. Brandon Lee, along with some friends, brings him down after a gain of perhaps three. That's getting chippy between the teams. Waiting on that shot still that Will Muschamp promised. As this is excellent field position. You get something positive on first down. This is about the area where you can take it. 
Bentley has been aggressive as a young quarterback, even in the fall scrimmages. Right out here. The roll, and on the run, loft it out of bounds. Second time he's had to throw it away today out of his five misfires. Two of them have been throwaways. Tom, one thing I noticed last week, South Carolina's game plan, a lot of play action, but the majority of the time they went play action was when Jake Bentley would take on pressure. Usually, that's not something that's going to happen. When you play action and roll out, Andre can speak to a quarterback's mentality of just knowing when to get rid of the football. But I was surprised to see some of the leakage and some of the pressure that came off play action last week for the game. You know, usually play action, you're keeping the back end. He's protected. You got the tight end, and if you're going to max protect, keep him in. Here's Bentley on the run. And he'll scramble out of bounds for a South Carolina first down. Well, you know what he has, Tom? Just a good feel for the game. You got to feel when to pull it down. You're getting the rush. It's not a step up situation here. If I step up, I'm going to be tackled. So I got to step up and then run. And then run to the first down. And I, what I like best about it, don't take a shot. Get yourself out of bounds and protect your body. He was set to enter his senior season at Opelika High School near Auburn, Alabama, going into this year. Instead, he signed early with South Carolina. Here's Debo Samuel making people miss. And he carries a defender with him for another yard or two. Donovan Newsom went for a ride, a gain of 12. Can't roll coverage to one of them. Can't take away Edwards because Samuel will hurt you. You can't take away Samuels because Edwards will hurt you. But here, when you get this kid at the ball in space, he does some magical stuff with it. Movement on the left side. Mason Zandy, one of the few seniors on this South Carolina roster. That may have saved them from a disaster, that false start. That ball was snapped as Samuel was coming in motion. It hit him. Offside, defense number 91. The movement by the defense caused the offense to react. Five-yard penalty remains first down. It's Charles Harris that gets flagged for the offsides. Watch him at the top up here. There he is. Correct call by the officials. Missouri besieged by penalties a couple weeks ago in the Middle Tennessee State game. Flagged 13 times for 125 yards in a homecoming loss. Deep ball, Bentley. Caught! And down at the goal line is Char uh, Chavis Dawkins. It goes for 34 to face first full of turf. Small price to pay. Another true freshman, young player that's going to be around a long time for Will Muschamp. There's the shot that he, he was talking about before the game. A.J. Turner lowers his head, can't get in. Brandon Lee and friends there to bring him down. This took him a little while to get to it. Watch Chavis Dawkins climb the ladder and reel that baby in. Nice job of concentration. And then he beats Missouri's best cover man in Arian Penton on the back end. A.J. Turner writhing in pain, holding his knee, it seems like. Oh boy, you just hope he's okay. He's actually the team's leading rusher. Came in with just under about 328 yards and a couple of touchdowns. And just got bent back there. And looks Leasing around. <laughs> Second and goal for South Carolina after Turner was helped off the field. Bentley rolling, changes direction, and he goes down before his head gets taken off by Cam Hilton. It's a loss of five. You think about the decision that Will Muschamp had to make. Do we take the red shirt off of this young man? And if we do, can we win? And it wasn't for winning next year or the year after. It was for winning now and getting to six wins and getting to a bowl. Well, you start talking, you talk to his teammates, and they're like, well, it wasn't as if he wasn't making plays in practice. He's never really a true scout team guy. He would get some reps, but not a lot of them. But there were some splash plays in practice that made you go, wow. And he could, uh, this is no surprise to his teammates. Third and goal, looking for Hurst. Instead, the slant is caught, and South Carolina has its third lead of the game on a strike to Casey Crosby. Keep in mind, Jake Bentley should be playing his senior year in high school, graduated as a junior true freshman and look at the poise slide in the pocket 
deliver the football with accuracy and timing. It is fun to watch if you like quarterbacks. He's the first quarterback since John David Booty to skip his senior year and quarterback a major college conference team. Recruiting. Do you bring recruits in and show them film highlights of a guy like Jake Bentley? He says, absolutely. We use those resources. And we've had, matter of fact, we had two calls this week from guys that we weren't on their radar that want to come in and visit and play with a guy like Jake Bentley. Why wouldn't you want to play with Jake Bentley? Spread it around right here. You see the accuracy. Look at this one. The timing. Nice job there. Bailing him out was Rico Dowdle. This one to the outside who gets him down to the one yard line. And how about the accuracy here to KC Crosby? I tell you what, the kid is going to be special. We're going to talk about Jake Bentley for a while. Under three minutes to go, first half. Drew Locke hands it off to Demarie Crockett, who's able to find maybe one yard on the right side. Talking with uh, South Carolina staff and offensive coordinator Kurt Roper, he said he the drop back passing game will be his baby. That's what is going to be his strength, but he is still yeah. learning the nuances of the position. Second down, nine. Crockett. Picks up one. It's like I minute. said earlier, it's what you can't teach, and it's just kind of the feel for the game. I told him around here yesterday, enjoy this for three years, because that's about all you're going to get out of Jake Bentley. He looks like an NFL quarterback. There's, to you. there's no doubt in my mind. The frame, I mean, you don't look like that at, as a high school senior. He is a every bit of 6'3, 223 pounds. 19 years old. Play clock will get to single digits before Drew Locke gets his snap off. They go trips to the left side. Locke looking left, staring left, wanting to go left, and steady goes down. Another sack for Carolina. A loss of eight. DJ Wanham and Jonathan Walton there. And Tyler Howell, the left tackle, they just couldn't hold up long enough. Is Drew Locke trying to survey the field? You see here the protection just start to break down. A couple of different South Carolina players able to get to the doorstep of Drew Locke. That ball has got to come out. Second sack of the day for Carolina. 147 to go before the half this college football season. Stream every game live on the ESPN app and on Watch ESPN. Download the app or visit WatchESPN.com today. And stick around at the half. You can watch a live performance of the Carolina Band on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming now on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. You tease me. I use the app. They've got the TV going at California Dreaming. I've got the app going. I'm watching one game on one. You got your iPad. You got your phone. Got, yeah, I got the, the college game on and a nice salad and some she crab she soup right, right in front of me. Debo lets it drop. It'll take a Missouri hop and trickle all the way down to the 27 yard line. Good punt from Corey Fatoni covers 51 yards. One minute 34 to go before the half. Celebrating its 12th year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. To date Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. This will tell me just how much trust that Will Muschamp has in his true freshman quarterback right here. You, would 130 you go for it? Oh, no. There's, you cannot win a football game in the first half. There's no such thing as scoring too many points in the first half of a football game. You'll look back in a lot of instances and wish you had that possession back. They go for the quarterback draw, and Bentley went down. May have tripped over his center, Allen Knott. And just trying to pop one to get the drive going. And he's tripped up. But, yeah, 120. 130, whatever it was to start it. Now they're going to take their time because he didn't have success on first down. This crowd's going to get restless again. I think we were here two weeks ago and the exact same thing happened. Now, in that situation, he's making his first start. I get it, protect him a little bit, but he's tasted some success and you got to see if he's able to, to win for you in these. This type of situation. So barring a crazy play, Carolina will hit the locker room with the lead. Missouri will get the ball to start the second half. 
Tigers use a timeout here. They've, they have two remaining. Stopping with 49 seconds left. And hoping to get the ball back. They'll get it back with time if they can keep South Carolina from a first down. A huge one tonight, by the way, in Lexington. College football on the SEC Network when Georgia takes on Kentucky in prime time. It's SEC Saturday night with Brent and Jesse and Kaylee and Kentucky is still alive in the East, my friend. And still rolling. And they rolled up a bunch of rushing yards last week. Benny Snell, 192. Boom Williams, 182. Both had two touchdowns. That was against Missouri last week. A little different animal than the Georgia Bulldogs. But certainly, they're capable of duplicating that type of performance. They are rolling in Kentucky. Florida is losing on the road in Arkansas, and Arkansas with a comfortable lead in the second half. So Florida loses, Kentucky knocks off Georgia. The Kentucky Wildcats will be in sole possession of first place by the end of the night tonight. Yeah. And we might be talking about it tomorrow, by the way, when I'm there for Kentucky basketball. It was that'll be huge. No doubt about it. 134 was on this clock with two timeouts. That's an eternity in college football. Go score some points. Or the Canadian Football League, if that's... Oh, yeah, that would take all night. <laughs> you start a two-minute drill in Canada. Run up the middle is good for a first down for David Williams on his first carry. Gain of 12. Now you get back on schedule. Now the two-minute drill comes back into play here. You get a point. You get something. Actually, Will Muschamp, I think, is going to take a timeout. We were just joking with Muschamp yesterday about how long the last minute in college games take. He's like, man, something's got to change. Let's go to NFL rules. Let's just get these games yeah. over with in three hours. Now it's to his advantage after they picked up the first Once down. Once you get a positive play, a big play to get a first down, now you get into your two-minute offense. With 47 seconds, clock will stop with each first down to move the chains. And he's got two young wide receivers that are now healthy that can really stretch the field. Brian Edwards and Debo Samuel have blossomed into playmaker. And that's the point he's trying to make is that you don't need to, if you go into the NFL rules, you should know where the ball's being spotted. The chains can move without the clock being stopped, which takes forever. And I know I got into it, you know, got into the conversation with him about uh, my favorite rule change that hasn't happened is the pass interference being marked at the spot of the foul. I, I, I need to call Steve Shaw and get a reasoning why that has never been on the table. He's listening right now. Every one of them has been, every penalty just about is marked from the spot of the foul. Bentley. Except pass interference. Pressure. Charles Harris will drag him down from behind. It's another sack for the Missouri defense, a loss of seven. And that's where he'll learn from. Cannot take a sack in the two-minute drill. That's the number one rule. Once you go into a two-minute offense, the ball's got to come out. Incompletion, stop the clock. Third sack for the Missouri defense, a team that has not created much, if any, havoc on defense through the first two-thirds of the season when they're most, mostly playing kind of a read-and-react defensive line for D-line Zoo, a defense that put multiple guys in the NFL based on the pressure and the numbers they put up up front. So that sack will end the first half. Will Muschamp will go to the locker room with more efficient running the ball than South Carolina. Five yards a carry for Missouri, less than two yards a carry for Carolina. We start the second half as Missouri will get the ball to start it. And a solid return for Alex Ross to set up Drew Locke in this Missouri offense. Locke in the first half, 9 of 14. 98 yards with a long of 27. He was sacked twice. Last year against South Carolina was his first career start. The former backup to Matty Mock, the sophomore from Lee's Summit High School outside of Kansas City, got the win in his first start against South Carolina last year at Faro Field. And he will throw it on first down and a sitting catch made for a gain of seven by Jamon Moore. Well, he has really started to assert himself in this game. A couple of big grabs in the first half for Jamon Moore, their top receiver and playmaker on the outside. Ish Witter starts the second half for Missouri in the backfield. Locke will keep it this time. Tried to cut back in before Marquavius Lewis brought him down. You talk about just a model of consistency. You're looking at it right there at number eight with Lewis. This seems to get better each and every Saturday.
DJ Smith in the game at safety for South Carolina. He'll come up and make a hit on Sean Culkin. Smith playing for the first time in today's game after being ejected for targeting last week. And Culkin just taking Gamecocks with him. He dragged four different guys on a gain of 23. When they opened the game, when Drew Locke hit that, that same pass to Sean Culkin early in the game, it was to the other side of the formation. But hey, what he's supplied a little energy there on the back end of that catch. More wide open. Smith comes up to hit him. It's a first down for Missouri, a gain of 12. Jay Moore get Jim, Jim on Moore gets up and says, hey, keep feeding me. I'm a little hungry. I haven't had the ball in a while. We've been in a halftime. I need to eat a little bit. Lock pumps. Moore didn't go, and he'll just have to throw it out of bounds. We got a flag on the play. Flag on the near side out by the receivers, outside the numbers. False start. Offense. Not all 11 players were sent for a full second. Five-yard penalty remains first down. And every once in a while, you'll get that. When you're trying to go tempo, they picked up a first down. Trying to go tempo, get everybody set. And that's on Drew Locke. You've got to make sure before you ask for the ball that everybody's set. You'll see out wide, Culkin, as well as Demetrius, Ma Demetrius Mason, both, both, both receiver and tight end moving around. So it makes it a first and 15. Shifty running back, Ish Witter takes it up the middle again. Following big number 77, Paul Adams for a Missouri first down. Is he having some kind of game? Got it played as a true freshman. And last season really came on when Russell Hansbro has suffered some injuries. Here's Witter again. And Witter breaks free for a moment again. Dragged down from behind by Chris Moody. Gain of eight. Well, Barry Odom told Cole, we're not going to give up on the running game. Going to stick with it. They go unbalanced left this time. Witter. With a sudden surge, is able to maybe pick up the first down. He exploded into Jonathan Walton, and Missouri gets the first down. Yeah, this is that warp pace that... Missouri likes to go on so they substitute it allows South Carolina and you see the official right in the middle right there holding up play to make sure South Carolina can get their substitute substitutes in it started when Missouri took Culkin off the field now Kendall Blanton in at his tight end spot inside receiver on the top of the formation eighth play of the drive to start the second half for Missouri lock looking at the double slants and set throws a fade there's Blanton touchdown Tigers a nine-yard strike and a well-drawn-up play by Josh Heupel and company. Great. Excellent timing by Drew Locke and Kendall Blanton. This ball's thrown. Watch the timing. The ball's thrown. Blanton's not even out of his route yet. That takes a tremendous amount of reps and confidence in your receiver to know that he's going to be in the right place at the right time and then make a play to finish it. That's good work. Tucker McCann on to attempt the extra point. He's missed a couple this season. You think Drew Locke's having fun? I think so. Drinking water from the fans, all that. We think it's water. It was at least a clear liquid. <laughs> May find some of that at five points tonight of other varieties. Locke with his first touchdown pass to the game for Kendall Blanton. His hands, he made a key yep. play at that Missouri touchdown. Adams puts it in the air. Rashad Fenton watches it take a hop. It'll go outside the pylon. That's why the official stands outside. If it hits him, he knows it was outside of the pylon, and so a flag will give South Carolina field position. Let's go back to the Mizzou pass. Yeah, you're going to see Chris Moody. Number 91. Receivers have elected to put the ball right play here. At the 35 creep up. Line. Start in as a linebacker, then he goes to the edge of the line of scrimmage. And then he's going to come. Watch Ish Witter. If you're a young running back, this is how you get on the field. Protect your quarterback. You don't have to throw knockout shots, but right there, just a piece allows Drew Locke to get the ball in the air to Kendall Blanton. Just a little piece of Chris Moody gives the necessary time needed to throw the touchdown pass. First and 10 for Bentley, and he hands it off to Rico Dowdle. Snuck by the first guy and is able to scratch and claw for a couple yards before Eric Beisel brings him down. Remember, Missouri's playing without starting middle linebacker, linebacker Cale Garrett ejected for targeting. South Carolina playing without one of their defensive backs, Chris Lamont, who was ejected from targeting. 
And now a little bit more pressure on Jake Bentley. I mentioned earlier that all season he hasn't had to play from behind. Make sure of that. Let me ask you, as a quarterback, especially a young one, where does that pressure manifest itself? What makes it so tough? Well, it causes you to start to press. The deeper into the game you get, the more you feel like you have to do in order for your team to win the football game. So now it's tied up. He still hadn't played from behind. But if that were to happen, Missouri gets off the field here on third down. They go down and score. You get to see uh, what's really inside of Jake Bentley. Third down, 10. This place has grown quiet. Low snap pressured. He gets folded in half. The pass is caught by Debo Samuel for a first down. Arian Penton right there, but it goes for 27 for the Gamecocks. I'll tell you what, he's made of all the right ingredients. Willing to stand in there, but this is a teaching moment for receivers. If you don't go up and catch that ball with your hands, it's going to get knocked down by the defender. And then this is for quarterbacks being you have to take shots sometimes in order to deliver the football not everybody's willing to do that that's why that's when you become special that when, looked, you, when you can deliver that way that last replay looked like the pins knocking away from the bowling ball Dowdle able to take it for five. Oh, that play what really stood out was Debo Samuel going up grabbing the ball out of the air rather than waiting for it so he could cradle it into his shoulder pads Missouri getting a signal from the sideline, checking the wristbands. South Carolina going no huddle. Dowdle snuck through the line of scrimmage, able to pick up two. Ricky Hatley there to stop him. It will leave third and medium. Officially, they'll call it third and three. South Carolina's converted 7 of 12 today. Bentley scans the entire field. Now he'll take off. And he gets thrown after a gain of one to the turf by Eric Beisel, the fourth-year junior out of Fenton, Missouri. At the start for Michael Shear a couple games ago after Shear, the great team leader, was injured in the loss to Middle Tennessee State. This is when you know the offense. Watch his head. Watch the helmet scan, scan, one progression to another. I'm out of options. Got a little green grass in front of me. Go ahead and take it. That gives Kurt Roper a lot of confidence in that young man because he knows that he's reading. He's going through his progressions. 46 yard attempt for Fry. It is just over the upright. They will say no good. Elliott Fry can't hit the go-ahead field goal. 9.18 to go in the third quarter. Doesn't just get tight for quarterbacks, Tom. Kickers as well. That when the game gets late, you start to get late. And one team has the momentum. Nice hold. Nice kick. It's wide left. We're still tied. Missouri has not led in this game. On first and ten, he goes over the middle. The tight end again. They have run that play, Andre, at least yes. three times today. This time it was Kendall Blanton. Twice to Sean Culkin, the big tight end at 6'6", 250. Then they go back to Kendall Blanton, who they are very high on. Just a sophomore who caught the touchdown pass. And all of a sudden, as Crockett takes it on the left side, all of the posters at Tiger Board are saying, see, I told you, we need to throw it over the middle more. And Missouri has found success over the middle. Well, they've got Jason Reese, another tight end that we have not called his name. There's three that are very effective for Missouri. Reese had been banged up with a rib injury after the Middle Tennessee game as Moody comes in to make the stop on Crockett, a gain of one. A deep, deep Missouri team when you talk about tight ends, the same program that produced Chase Kaufman. And oh, by the way, a guy by the name of Kellen Winslow back in the day. You know, and you fast forward. We can do it, coaches won't, because they're still, in, they live in the moment. But these are going to be two surprise teams in 2017 because of all the youth that they have. A lot of young players playing in this ball game for both sides. They're going jumbo here. Augusta, the first back, is a defensive tackle. Yeah. Multiple offensive linemen have entered the game, including Trevor Sims. Had that touchdown run last week. Play clock at one. Lock hands it off, and Crockett following those big guys may have gotten stopped. 
No game. Jonathan Walton, first man there. I and that will leave fourth and one. If I'm Barry Odom, I line up, same formation, go back to the same play, and I tell Crockett, follow Josh Augusta. He came through clean. If you just stay behind him, you got an opportunity to not only to pick up the first down, but to break it and turn it into a foot race. They're talking about it on the Missouri sideline. They'll have a chance to discuss because they're going to bring the chain out. Let's take a look at that last play. Watch big 97. Just stay behind him. Stay behind him. Be patient. Stay behind him. You cut, jump, whatever you got to do to stay behind him, and you come through free. They could just slip off his right hip. No doubt. And then it's a foot race. So perhaps the length of the football needed for Missouri to convert this fourth down. I line up. I'm going for it. The message is stay behind big Josh Augusta. Maybe even give it to the big fella. Missouri one of two on fourth downs today. Same formation. Aha. Uh -huh. Missouri will use a timeout. Or did they? Why did the officials stop play? They ran in before the quick snap. No timeout taken. Right. Now they'll wind the play clock. Yeah, the was, play clock hadn't been started. That's, that's what it was. Here we go. Augusta's got it. Big fella. And he rolls forward for the first down. He might like those honey rolls at California Dream, and he just earned one. <laughs> I love it when the big fella gets the carry. I'm sure Booger McFarland loves it as well. Give the big fella some love. And Booger had a catch back in his day, if I'm not mistaken. Watch him here. He came through so cleanly the play before. Why not give it to him? Nice job. How about that? Coach, head coach feeling it a little bit. Tigers looking for the first lead of the game. Lock pumps. Goes. Deep ball. It is underthrown and intercepted. Rashad Fenton with the takeaway. Demetrius Mason shows his inexperience when this ball is in the air. Bad throw by Drew Locke as a receiver. You got to go bail me out. You got to go help me. Come back, go turn into a defensive back and fight for the football. At worst, go knock it down. Watch the receiver, ISO on him. Now the ball, he takes an outside release. It's thrown inside. Get back in there and make a play. Swat it away. Knock it down. Anything you do, but don't allow the defender to pick it off. I don't, let me add something to that. It wasn't a great route anyway. Demetrius Mason actually ran out of bounds on that route. Would have been ineligible if they would have caught it anyway. Inexperience. Very young Missouri team. Mason just a freshman out of Grayson High School out of, outside of Atlanta. So Missouri with a missed opportunity on the turnover. Rico Dowdle will take it out of the end zone. And he takes it out to the five-yard line and gains another yard as Cam Hilton drags him down. A tough running by Rico Dowdle. He can cut on a dime and just drags tacklers, runs through defenders. Dowdle, first team all state out of North Carolina's A.C. Reynolds High School up in the mountains of Asheville. Parade All-American there. Went to him early and often. Had a lot of touches in the first quarter. Here's a big one for Dowdle. Bends it back inside. And they get out of the shadows of the goalposts and all the way out to the 24-yard line. A gain of 18. Well, this is an excellent job of blocking. Looks like Zach Bailey, the left guard, with an excellent block to open it up for Rico Dowdle. Watch the left guard go to work. Pulls around out in front. Seal blocked a nice kick out by Zach Bailey, and then the rest of it is just on the shoulders of Dowdle. They've gone to him or tried to go, go to him. 24 out of their 54 offensive plays if you add in the targets in the receiving game and the catches. Here's the tight end. Room for Hayden Hurst, and he spins out to the 30-yard line. Goal. Love to see Zach Bailey, Andre Ware called it out, pulling around, excellent kick out block, going to the counter, haven't seen much of it today, a lot of zone, 
out of inside zone from South Carolina. Those defensive ends from Missouri playing a little bit tight. Go kick out the outside defender. Huge running lane. Yeah, he was miss a Mr. Football semifinalist in the state of South Carolina his senior year coming out of high school. Corner blitz coming for Missouri. Bentley goes down the sideline. Debo Samuel is. takes another one down. It's my ball, punk. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gain of 22. Stealing boxes? <laughs> Debo just taking balls out of the air in a strong way. My grandmama gave me that. Watch this. Just the work at the end of this. Go up, make a play for me. Debo, once again. Seven catches, 89 yards for Debo Samuel, the sophomore from Inman, South Carolina. Here's David Williams trying to stretch. Take one more look at that, that grab by Debo Samuel. This makes my job as a quarterback so much easier. Guys that catch the ball with their hands away from their body, big catch radius, just put it in the area. And I got a, a great percentage in terms of being able to catch the football or come down with it. He's caught everyone that's been thrown to him. Now second and eight for South Carolina. Following the Fenton interception. Bentley scans again. He'll dump nice. it out of the backfield at David Williams. You can tell that Jake Bentley studies the game. On film a week ago against Tennessee, they sent a blitz. And he had Dowdle in the flat open, didn't go there, and took a sack. Their pressure, quick, the coverage dictates it as well. Take the safety valve, check it down, get him the ball, and let him work in space. So you're seeing him get better I game see by game? It, I'm seeing him get better game by game. He's completed eight consecutive passes, and that's number nine. Wow. Debo Samuel down the sideline got his toe down. Say what you want to. Bromance, man crush, whatever it is you want to call it. But this is just flat out good quarterback play and good receiver play on the other end. Look at this. Unbelievable. Was his right foot down when I'm he hauled sure. in that pass and left foot certainly wasn't. Snap this. Yeah, I gotta take a look at this. But the ball was thrown as, as Samuel. Boy on the field was, was a catch inbounds. The previous play is under review. Well before he came out of his break in order for it to get there. And then he drops it right over or between two defenders, one high, one low. You see it here just into the space. I think that's a catch. I think it's a catch. The right toe was still down once the ball arrived and was in his hands right there. Yep. Catch. Right Andre. There. Hey. Catch. Allow me to add a line to your love letter to Jake Bentley, and I don't know <laughs> if you noticed this, but after that play, Jake Bentley was the guy hurrying his team to the line and trying to get the <laughs> snap off. Review, Always plugged in. The field is confirmed. Always <laughs> plugged in to what's going on on the field. That is a guy that gets it. That's a guy that's going to be special for a long time. Enjoy him for three years. What are you going to get Jake Bentley for Valentine's Day? Uh, no, I'm not going there with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going there with oh, you. Oh, he's been magnificent with the drive Look, on the line. Nine of nine on third down. Third downs, he's perfect. And two touchdowns. Toss in that. Toss those in as well. I haven't heard you rave about something since you tried the she crab soup for the first time. <laughs> Bentley comes back left. It's a first miss to Debo Samuel, just off the left hand a little bit in front of him. It's just a growing appreciation for a guy that you know studies the game. And in all of this, he should be playing high school football. Yeah. Graduated his junior year, we talked about it, well documented, but he's trying to get his team, because he knows it's close. With Samuel, did he get a toe down or not? But he's trying to run the play. You don't have to love quarterback play to appreciate what he brings to the table. I mean, this is an exciting brand of football. Sit down in the film room with me a little while, and I'll, I'll show you why. You Rico Zano spins. Touchdown, Carolina. job here getting the flow a little inside zone get everybody flowing left he cuts back right puts that left foot in the ground and then it's just vertically up the field and he is one-on-one -on -one with a secondary again 
A 98 yard drive for South Carolina that started after the Fenton interception. Elliott Fly remains perfect on point out. He said, you know, I've never been here before. What's it like? I said, just wait. <laughs> yeah, it'll get a little crazy. I tell you what, he, he was talking about it as well. I don't even know if I want to go there because I know exactly what you're going to say that I jinxed us, but I'll go there anyway. Weather was perfect at kickoff. He perfect. And he talked about it in November. And then I go down and talk to Will Muschamp. He's talking about the same thing. We've been lucky. Yes, we have. Blizzard coming, I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they send us to a bowl game in Hawaii or the Bahamas. Alex Ross with good field position for Missouri takes it out to the 28 yard line. Both teams have been doing a good job of taking care of the football, but Missouri's second turnover led to another go ahead score for South Carolina. Two touchdowns off of a pair of Missouri miscues. Yeah, you had the Mason fumble that led to a touchdown early in the game, and then there, the previous drive for Missouri, an interception by Drew Locke or from Drew Locke, led to. The Dowdle touchdown run, half of South Carolina's points coming from turnovers. Ish Witter for Missouri picks up five. DJ Smith with the stop. Well, Missouri's run game has been really impressive today. Witter and Crockett both have touchdowns on the ground. 131 yards on the ground for Mizzou. Trying to set up the screen. Moore couldn't get his hands on. His knee would have been down anyway. So it's actually, it's actually good that he dropped it. It would have been a loss of yardage with that knee down. You know, I wonder if Drew Locke's getting a little bit winded, Andre. He came out for the huddle that time. You could kind of see his face. His throw's a little bit off target. He's getting a little tight, too. All of a sudden, he's playing from behind. He's been there most of the day, but, you know, it's getting later in the game. And as a quarterback, you can't help it sometimes, but looking up at that clock, you just realize oh, there's still plenty of time, but it's getting late in this game. It's also getting loud. Blitz coming. Mizzou picks it up. And wrong page. J. Mon Moore running straight down the field. Drew Locke expected him to come back. Yeah, he's expecting a hitch. J. J. Mon Moore is expecting you see he's talking about the difference in cushion from the corner to the receiver he's expecting him to sit down based on the look that Javon Javon Moore got at pre-snap and it seems like he was expecting that because Drew Locke may have misread the signal coming from the sideline what a punt Corey Fatoni able to get a great bounce. Debo Samuel did not return it. We got a flag on the play, though, on Missouri, which is going to give South Carolina some yardage after that 57-yard punt. Anthony Sherrills got caught up with some South Carolina players, and it looked like Mizzou had flipped the field. We might have an unsportsmanlike here on Sherrills. And Sherrills has been a solid special teams player most of the season. He was a starter earlier in the year and then fought had to fight his way back into the lineup. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 22, the kicking team, his first of the game. Number seven, receiving team, his first of the game. Those fouls offset and the penalties canceled. That was the new Jamarcus series, King. first down. So Missouri catches a break. We'll try yeah. to find it on uh, video where that happened and what exactly happened between the two. It would be costly because another unsportsmanlike for either one, they'd be ejected. They did it by turning to Rico Dowdle at the outset of the drive. Dowdle back there here. Play action to him. They pull it back. They hit Debo Samuel, and Samuel makes two men miss, and he carries it for 11 and a first down. You might want to CC Debo Samuel on those emails you're sending to Jake Bentley. Yep, he's uh, he is playing, playing hurt right now. He's playing with a high voice right now. I'd have a date with a medical tent. So instead, they go to Brian Edwards. And Edwards dragged down by, by Beisel gain is six. You all right? You still with me? <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> I, had to hold, I had to mute myself for a little while, but I'm with you. Cole, you with us? 
I am, guys. Uh, we're going to talk about trips to the field, a formation that Andre and I have seen from Kurt Roper often. Saw it again on that last play. Andre, what's the advantage that, that an offense gets with trips to the field? Well, talking to Kurt Roper, he says that he, he basically can allow, it, it allows him to put pressure on the defense formationally. And that's why he's in it a lot. Then you can, you can isolate as well. The pressure comes because you have to rotate to the trips with coverage, and you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations to the backside. Here's Rico Dowdle. What change that, uh, that South Carolina saw from Missouri that, that may be affecting South Carolina in the three-by-one sets is more Tampa two, more two safeties okay. as opposed to one. Because if you try to play it with a balanced defensive look, now you're outnumbered to the trip side of the field. If you move coverage and rotate it over, now I got Debo Samuel or Brian Edwards backside one-on-one. -on -one. And with a guy like Jake Bentley who can scan the field, there's there's Debo Samuel back in the game. He can scan the field and find those open matchups. Even in zone coverage, you can still work the one on one because essentially that's what it becomes down here or down at the bottom when you have a guy like Debo Samuel. And he's won those 50 50 balls with Gibson. Pressure on Bentley, trying to escape. Somehow he gets out of there. And he's finally dragged down for a sack. He'll lose four yards, but it looked like he was going to escape before Brandon Lee, the sophomore from Indianapolis, caught up with him. Just ran out of time. Once you escape, pull it up, throw it out of bounds. Get outside the tackle box and let it go. And he's been pretty good about that. This series has fifth-year senior. Kelly able to run into that one. Taken at the 33 by Chris Black. Black changing direction. And he gets taken down on a great open field tackle by Moody. Well, we can take you back to 2013 for Old Field, Columbia, Missouri. Connor Shaw came off the bench to throw three touchdowns. And a game that came down to wire, Andrew Baggett missed a chip shot field goal in the second overtime. Columbia cut to the Carolina then. Then here, under Steve Spurrier's watch, South Carolina coughed up a late lead. Missouri rallied from 20 to 7 down with less than eight minutes to go. Russell Hansborough, Matty Mock, and Evan Bame and company pulled off the victory. Remember, Spurrier later that year goes, you know, looked up, saw we had 20, thought, huh, how can we never miss for two? That might come back and bite us. <laughs> it did. <laughs> it surely did. They fake the end around. Locke gets out of trouble and will take it past the 40-yard line before T.J. Holloman comes up with a stop and a gain of five. We're playing with fire there. Yeah, Jamon Moore came open a second time. He was open earlier in the game. Watch him. Keep your eyes on him. All that play action, he's just kind of lulling his guy to sleep, and now you give him a head start wide open. But you got Drew Locke running around back there, scrambling because of leak, leaked pressure. On second and five, first down run, Demarius Crockett into Carolina territory before Moody brings him down. Ninth tackle of the game for Moody to lead Carolina, a gain of 14. And I make that point about Jamon Moore because going all the way back to the interception that Drew Locke threw with the intention of throwing it to Mason, Moore was wide open on the other side of the field. Unbalanced again, big gain again behind that unbalanced line, and Paul Adams on the left side, gain of 12. Back to what you were talking about. Yeah, here's the point. He's throwing right. He looks right. Jamon Moore right here, double move. Had King beat, looking for the football, it goes. It's an interception rather than a touchdown if you're able to scan the field. Sometimes I'm convinced of it. When I watch video, Drew Locke reads one side of the field and one side of the field only. But we're seeing different effort from the receivers on the offside from no Missouri doubt about these days. It. No doubt about it. Play clock is already at five. Locke trying to set up the screen. Wow, what a play by Rashad Fenton. He went right around the would-be block and able to blow it up. It's a loss of three. Yeah, had the big-time interception in the third quarter, and then there plays the screen about as well as you possibly can. I mean, you talk about playing through a block. That's just want to right there. That's just pure effort. Fenton already has a pick that led to a South Carolina score. Second. And a 13. Screen up the middle. Kendall Blanton 
Able to bounce off the first guy and pick up eight. That will leave third and about five. Yurik Jones with the stop. Yeah, when you have a, a play for negative yards, you're just trying to get something positive to put you in third down and manageable. And they did well beyond that with a screen pass to Blanton right in the middle. Allow the pressure to come to you. Set the screen up. This is this is right in the uh, wheelhouse for Drew Locke to convert this for a first down. And then I think even if you don't, if you're Barry Odom, you might think about going for it on fourth down here. So you need something positive on third down. Locke looks right there, and it's batted away at the line of scrimmage by South Carolina. Well, it was open. Marquavius Lewis and Taylor Stallworth right there. It was open. The offensive line, when you know it's a quick game, and Cole can attest to this one, you've got to get the hands of defenders down. They're trying to chop them down, and they miss. But you got to make sure you get them down. Taylor Stallworth able to tip that ball away and turn away Missouri. 44-yard attempt for Tucker McCain. No, pardon me, that's Turner Adams at a Springfield kick to attempt this long kick. And it is outside the left upright. Technique where they dive and then jack their head backwards into that defensive lineman. Rico Dowdle down the numbers. And he's pulled down from behind by Anthony Sherrill's a run of 23. And Sherrill's is lucky that the officials didn't get him for a horse collar. He grabbed, Dowdle went down, and then he put his hands up like, hey, I didn't do anything. A nice block by Zach Bailey. They pull him out in front again. Big fella pulling at 6'6", 315, leading the way for Rico Dowdle. Dowdle's over the century mark, 20 carries, 107 yards. They fake the jet sweep right back to Dowdle. Cam Hilton was a step late getting there, and Dowdle rips off another first down. Boy, same exact play pretty much. Zach Bailey, the left guard, pulling around out in front to lead Rico Dowdle. He's going to kick out. Watch the block right here. Just come right around and a nice kick out. Look at the big fella moving bodies. That's Joey Burkett, the middle linebacker he's kicking out on. Missouri brings the corner blitz. Dowdle runs past everybody. Taken down at the Palmetto for a gain of 14. Cole. Nice mix of runs here by South Carolina. Andre just mentioned the two power plays with Bailey pulling around, trading paint with linebackers. Love going back to the zone play there now, cutting backside quickly because you have those linebackers flowing to stop the power. They've seen pulling offensive linemen on multiple plays. Now hit that inside zone and quickly cut it back. All right, pretty to watch. Missouri loading up the box now as South Carolina has turned to the run. David Williams in the backfield as Dowdle rests for a spell. 147 yards on the ground, already 34 better than their average. Bentley keeps it. And Bentley dragged down by Charles Harris. Gain of seven. I just don't know if I would be drag racing my Bentley. <laughs> <laughs> those are, those are luxury riding cars. I got Rico Dowdle to, to drag race with. You know what I'm saying? Keep yeah. him upright, keep him protected, and let Rico Dowdle do the dirty work. Second and three. Missouri's inability to stop the run in the second half, eerily similar to what they did last week against Kentucky. Some movement up front, no flags. Williams cut down right near the line to gain. Josh Augusta tripped him up. And that'll be a first down for South Carolina. And here's a reminder to South Carolina fans. Jake Bentley, true freshman. Rico Dowdle, true freshman. Brian Edwards, true freshman. Debo Samuel, sophomore. Hayden Hurst, sophomore. You got four offensive linemen coming back. This team will be loaded next season. And the East is going to be wide open, by the way. Heck, it's wide open right now. Williams, or pardon me, Dowdle hesitated, then able to surge forward. Harris caught up to him after he gained seven. South Carolina hasn't led by more than a touchdown this entire game. This youth movement trying to get the Cox to a bowl. Yep, and you got a guy like Jake Bentley talking with Will Muschamp. 
Kids want to come play with them. They want to come catch the football with the next best thing that's going to happen in the SEC. Well, you're looking at it in jersey number four. Dowdle bottled up initially. Hey, you were down. We were both down on the field before the game at separate times. Did you notice the crowd down on the field? Did you see all the recruits? I mean, did oh, you yeah. notice the interest level? We've down been here the field? two times in, in what, a three week period? And both times we've been here, the sidelines were loaded with recruits. Loaded with recruits. Will Muschamp making a difference already here at South Carolina. Said so they're calling him trying to visit. Eight, uh, seven consecutive runs on this drive. Maybe another on this Wildcat in third and one. And Dowdle gets stood up and thrown down behind the line of scrimmage. Josh Augusta, Cam Hilton, Charles Harris, and Eric Beisel in on the play for the Missouri Tigers. Beisel is the most productive defensive player on the team on the field today. He's got 15 tackles. Will Muschamp's going to elect to take the points. Crowd wants him to go for it. I'm not sure I wouldn't go for it as well. Well, this would put him up two scores. It's the right thing to do, but when you have momentum, ride it. Elliott Fry has missed one field goal today. He hasn't missed inside 30 yards in his entire career. Chip shot for him, and it is good. That's it. No return for Missouri. So here's what's next for South Carolina. They'll go to the swamp next week. Game time and network still to be determined. But Florida is getting beat by 21 in Fayetteville right now. The SEC East could be in a tumble by the time we're done today. South Carolina uh, trying to play catch up. Cole, did you say there is a scenario for a big mess of a tie in the East that could possibly send South Carolina to Atlanta? There are a lot of things that need to happen, but it is mathematically possible for the Gamecocks on, I, I believe, number four or five down the tiebreaker list to qualify to play in Atlanta as the SEC East champion. We would need a four-way tie for that to happen, right? Correct. Oh, man. It's like the season's just getting started. Locke hits his man on a slant. And Floyd carries guys with them all the way down inside the 40. Missouri says we're not done yet. It's the exact play they tried to go to on third down when the ball was batted away by Taylor Stallworth. Slot, they, just a simple slant route, and they were able to complete it there. 37-yard pitch and catch between Locke and Floyd. And now to do the air again, tipped again. It's a second time South Carolina's been able to bat one away. Guess Taylor who? Stallworth. Other side of the formation. There's the, the slant, gets inside position. 37-yard gain. They try to come back to it again, and guess who? Big Taylor Stallworth on the other side, knocking it away. Missouri trying to set up a trick play. Double pass, perhaps. South Carolina all over it. Eric Lauren gets thrown for a loss. Backwards, the wrong way, 10 yards towards Charleston, and that's not where Missouri was wanting to go. Darius English blew it up. Eric Laurent, the receiver, you're going to see him go backwards. He's waiting. At this point, it's taken too long. The ball's got to go out. Just throw it out of bounds or throw it to Sean Culkin, who's right in front of you. Actually, has turned blocker. Wow, Missouri trying to get a little creative. Now they're left with third and 20. Deep ball. Caught. First down. Chris Black flag on the play. Yeah, maybe a targeting here. And Chris Moody may be done. 33-yard strike. And you already have Chris Lamonts out with a targeting penalty. Now they're dropped the flag on Moody for essentially the same thing here. Personal foul, targeting, defense, number six. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. The play is under review. Well, for homecoming, we've seen Gamecocks players going home. This would be the second ejection of the day from the South Carolina defense. Yeah, Chris Black, the Alabama transfer, graduate transfer. What he got on the call? They get him in the uh, shoulder. It's tough. I can't tell if he got the the face mask. He's trying to pull up. 
but we know <laughs> earlier that means nothing. I got to believe if the other call stood, this one will stand. Oh, no, you know, I, I look that that last angle. I look back, and it's almost like Moody got him in the chest plate of the shoulder pad versus above it. It would be costly. Lamont's has already been ejected yeah, for this, targeting. This one would roll over into the first half of next week if it stands. Yeah, there's no crown of the helmet. There's no above the shoulders or head and neck area. That should be overturned. Ten tackles today for Moody, leading the South Carolina team. Moody playing with a soft cast, you see there. After further review, there is no foul for targeting. Thirty-three yard strike to Black. Moody will stay in the game. Tigers down two scores, playing with a great sense of urgency on this drive. Fifth play of the drive. They've already covered sixty yards on a couple of big strikes from Locke. About that play though, the third and twenty, and he throws a strike to Chris Black to pick up the first down. On first and ten, Demarie Crockett. Is able to take it to the 11. It looked like a face mask in there. And Crockett may have gotten grabbed by the face mask. Pulled backwards. It's close. You see him in there. It's actually it's right up around the shoulder pad. That's the strength. He's turned it so quickly it looked like a face mask because his whole head turned around. Nearly 400 yards of offense for this Missouri team that had 629 yards in a loss to Middle Tennessee State. Where is Jamon Moore? Bottom of your screen. Jamon Moore gives it up to Crockett, loses his footing, and T.J. Holloman a big reason why. Decleated him for a loss of three. Yeah, you know at some point T.J. Holloman's going to show up and make a play for you. He's the, the glue. He's the heart and soul of the defense, one of the captains. Nice play there. Tom, they've been bringing that backside blitz away from the running back to just play that cutback against his own read all night long. Four and 11 have been the primary blitzers in that look. Lock, fade route, end zone, incomplete. Trying to find Kendall Blanton. Blanton went into the hedges in the railing. That's going to leave fourth and nine. Missouri bring on the kicking team. Trying to play jump ball situation with a 6-6 Blanton. Right here, go, go, go make a play for me. Just about does it with one hand. Almost took an ugly spill into that barrier back there. 31-yard attempt. They go back to Tucker McCann after Adams missed on the last attempt for Missouri. That was a deeper one from the right hash. Wide right, never had it. Two missed field goals in the fourth quarter for Barry Odom's Tigers. Now when you don't have field goal kickers, it's the night for the Tigers. Ball's back into Carolina's hands, and freshman quarterback Jake Bentley trying to go to 3-0 and in his very young career. Debo Samuel can't quite find the edge. He's able to pick up one before he's brought down by Brandon Lee. So many different ways. I would a quarterback in place. There were always playmakers in this offense, but now they have a guy to actually operate and get the ball to the playmakers, distribute it. That's when you become dangerous offensively. Second down nine. Carolina using some clock here. And then they go back to using 
Rico, Uncle Rico straight up for seven. Tom, following up on that point by Andre, I think it goes back, and this South Carolina team's been a perfect example this year, how critical balance is in football, and if you want to smush it down a little bit more, in offensive football. If you're not balanced, these D coordinators and these defensive players in this league are just too good. They'll find a way to take away the one thing that you're successful with, and they won't, they'll, they'll, they'll slow you down. You cannot be one-dimensional anymore. And I'm all for smushing. Jacob August and Hayden Hurst will flop the formation and move left on a third and two. Maybe, maybe not. Just short of the first down mark. Just short of it. And Barry Odom going to take a timeout. They'll stop the clock with 3.14 to go. Well, this offensive line is so physical. You can hear the pads popping way up here in the press box. Well, that was a big tackle by Brandon Lee. Keeps Missouri in the game as South Carolina will be Hard looking. to imagine, but it's real. Movement up front. That'll back it up and make it a fourth and six. And a little bit more room Prior for the returner, Chris Ball Black. Start. Offense number four. Five-yard penalty remains fourth down. If, I, if I'm Missouri, I would come after Sean Kelly. He's got a three-step and then kick it. Yeah, he ran into his last one. I mean, yeah, I, I, I would actually come after this if I'm Missouri. Barry Odom works specifically with the punt return team for the Tigers. Watch how he his, his routine to kick it. Usually it's two steps and it's gone. With him, it's three. They don't come after this. Trying to set up a return. It is a beautiful punt with magnificent hang time. And Black has to take a fair catch. Driven back to the 22-yard line, a 53-yarder for Sean Kelly. This series has been defined by mistakes. Remember, Missouri missed a chip shot field goal a couple years ago by Baggett in double overtime, and two missed field goals today, leaving six points off the board for the Tigers. We've got a flag, and it's going to be holding against Missouri on that punt return. There was no return. It was a fair catch. So that's going to cost the Tigers some yardage. As if it weren't tough already with 3.09 left with two timeouts. We go at warp speed. You need to score in a hurry. Locks thrown for 243 yards, one touchdown and one costly pick. South Carolina drops eight. Lock has nowhere to go on the run, tries to fit it in and nearly picked off by King. He breaks up the pass intended for Jamon Moore. See, this is the point I try to make when I say Drew Lock reads one side of the field. Watch his face mask. It never leaves. The, side, the left side of the formation never goes back right, never scans left to right. It becomes easy for a defensive coordinator to start to defend against that. When you know that once his head turns and he commits to a side of the field, you don't have to worry about what's going on to the left or right of him after he commits. That makes it easy. You can jump routes that way as well. Here's Witter again, second consecutive carry, and he picks up a first down on a gain of three. Who's at the biggest advantage there? Linebackers, safeties, corners? Uh, all secondary players, certainly. And then once you once you see him come in, because you're looking in, if it's zone. The zone again, they drop eight again. Lock fires outside the numbers, and a leaping grab made just shy of the marker by Demetrius Mason, and he turns inside instead of outside, which would have stopped the clock. Gain of seven. Still just a young player trying to find his way. He's inexperienced in that situation. Prevent defense again for Carolina. They almost get to lock. They eventually do. And he gets taken down after a gain of one trying to scramble. Yurik Jones will shoot the arrow. He and Taylor Stallworth came up with a play. Stallworth. 
has been all over the place tonight. Timeout. A couple Missouri. of passes Second defended. Timeout of the half. Knocked down. This will be a 30 second timeout. So it's a 10 point deficit for Barry Odom's team with under two minutes to go. You know, this is a, a head coach in a program that was just getting hammered yeah. everywhere, but a team that they got outplayed last week by Kentucky. They lost to Middle Tennessee State, a team they shouldn't lose to. But what has his team shown you today? Well, just a fight. I mean, there's some fight left in the football team because there's a, a lot of games, a lot of time remaining in the season, and they, they finally came out and decided to play tonight, put up a fight against uh, with South Carolina. Unless they can pull this out, Missouri's not going to a bowl. It'd be really tough for them anyway. They'd have to win all of their remaining games. But South Carolina, on the other hand, is, is right there, and we are seeing drastic improvement in just two weeks. You see it each and every week. You turn the video on, you see the improvement each and every week. I think every week, Kurt Roper is giving Jake Bentley a little bit more on his plate in which to uh, to digest in the offensive playbook and you start seeing things that from last week you didn't see or you see in this week that you didn't see last week 430 yards of offense today for a team that was only scoring 14 points a game before Bentley took over third and one Locke pulls it back wants a deep ball and he turns to Demetrius Mason for a first down They'll stop the forward progress and the clock with 148 to go, gain of 19. They need a big play. Something down to down the field to get a big, big chunk play. Lock fires incomplete. Over the head of Mason. 141 to go. Missouri needs two scores. Only one timeout remaining. They have missed two field goals. I don't even know where they would need to go to get in field goal range here. You got to be thinking touchdown regardless. <laughs> I'm thinking it's four downs all the way to the end zone. You're going to get an offsides here. But you use all four downs. I think the kicker is certain. It's, Offside, he's out of play right now. Defense number 94. Five yard penalty remains second down. But if you had a reliable kicker, most teams you in would this take scenario. the field goal. Yeah, because you, you're going to need a field goal. You take the field goal and then you'd onside kick and try to recover. And then now all of a sudden you could, you could tie it up by going down and scoring a touchdown. But they probably need at least 15 yards to get in field goal range anyway. Second of five now. Lock turns all the way around and he gets dragged down. Wow, brute strength of Kier Thomas to throw Lock to the turf. Another true freshman, very quick inside player for Will Muschamp, but there's a, that goes to show that youth movement they have going on at South Carolina. He's very much right in the middle of it. Third sack for Carolina. Lock on third down. Fires complete to Mason. First down, clock stop. It's just, a, it's really amazing to me to watch Missouri's offense and Drew Lock operate and just how he just stays to one side. Once he turns there, it's not a scan. It's not a work your way to that side. It is flip your hips there and stay. Tenth play of the drive. Lock looking left. Flushed left. And that one is no incomplete. Trying to get it down the sideline to Jamon Moore. 105 to go. Whoa. Like the left one had a chance, but that's a pretty good call by the official. Missouri could use a replay here, gift them a timeout. They don't stop the play. Lock over the middle, incomplete. Dangerous play. TJ Holloman knocks it down. Got two interceptions on the season. Really good ball skills when you throw it in his area and they're in zone coverage. Third down, 10. Great coverage. Sideline route again. Caught. First down, Missouri. Demetrius Mason. And gets himself out of bounds, which will stop the clock. South Carolina's okay with this approach. They give you some, take the underneath stuff. Work your way down the field, burn some clock. 
Lock stairs right. We'll roll that way. And chucks it. The flag down. In the vicinity of Missouri's right tackle. Holding offense for 56. 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. That's Rick Sampson Bailey, the center. Dinged up the last couple of weeks. At this point, I don't know that anybody's 100%. Right there at the end of it, you see an hold. Time the biggest opponent now. 47 ticks remain. Long throw, outright Jamon Moore, and he steps out of bounds. And that's going to leave second and 11 with 41 seconds remaining. Nice shell coverage. You see it back here. Call that four cross. Corners will bail. Safeties will get deep. They'll give you all the underneath stuff. And just come up and make tackles. For the victor go the spoils in Mayor's Cup. Third down. Locke has room to scramble. He'll throw back across his body, and it is intercepted. Flags down, picked off by Chris Moody. Let's wait and see what the hankies are for. What have I told you about going over the middle late? Don't do it. Holding on the offense, number 76. Kelly is declined. A couple of key takeaways for the South Carolina defense, including the pick by Moody, second of the night for Locke, and South Carolina will pick up its fifth win of the season. And you see the hold. And Tyler Howell, but then right here, nothing happens good over the middle late. Late, trying to go back inside across your body. Not an accurate throw. And Moody with his first pick of the year. Missouri three fourth quarter trips inside the South Carolina 30 yard line. No points to show for it. Victory formation for the third game for Jake Bentley. Tonight's quick and loans player of the game the freshman quarterback 22 of 28 career high 254 and a couple of scores. South Carolina now five and four three games remaining They're one win away from returning to the postseason. Don't forget Georgia and Kentucky tonight in a huge game in the East. Brent, Jesse, and Kaylee are in Lexington. I know because Jesse keeps taking selfies and sending them out on social media. He'll have to call a game in just a few moments. Barry Odom and Will Muschamp meet at midfield where the Gamecocks have now earned win number five behind their 